Hey there and welcome back to Beginner's Fab. My name is Eric McGrew. I am the host of the show and this is my project, the Hatsu that you see behind me, the one that I am working on the leaf spring conversion on. And in the past few episodes I've talked about some of the um, thoughts that I've had on the leaf spring conversion, how hard it is or whatnot, the components that you need for it, some of the things you want to keep in mind when you're trying to install the, uh, the suspension. And even with the best of intentions, even trying to calculate everything, when you haven't done it before, there are going to be things that you're probably going to miss. And in fact, that's what's happened with me. I actually tried to take measurements, I tried to do everything, and I still got some stuff wrong that I'm going to have to fix. Now, one of the things that I got wrong, and you can probably tell right off the bat looking at the, the tire, the axle, and the fender well, is that... Even with my measurements, I got the axle and the springs too far forward. Now, this was due to trying to make a compromise in a couple of ways. First off, there were some tow hooks back here on the back of the chassis that I cut off, and I was hoping not to have to grind all the way to the original chassis because the factory welds are really, really good. They're really hard to grind off and there's a thick plate that I'll have to try to cut off or something without damaging the chassis. So I was trying to avoid that if possible just to make my life a little bit easier, but in the end it didn't work out. So now I have to actually move my axle back about an inch and a half and I am going to have to do a, quite a bit more grinding back here on the bottom of the chassis so that I can move the shackle mount uh, from the chassis mount backwards about an inch and a half and it sit flush and flat in the way it should. Is it the end of the world? No. However, it is kind of frustrating and it is a lot more work that I have to do. With that in mind, one of the things that I want to make very, very clear to you guys is something that I learned a while back and if you've done any kind of fabrication for any kind of time, you'll know the same, is that don't get caught up in thinking you have it all worked out and then start finish welding everything. That will only end in a lot of frustration and complication for you. A lot of lost time and a lot of lost materials as well. So what I do and what I've done on this is I actually just make really good solid tack welds to present everything. Then once I've taken the measurements, I know it's good. It, I, I cycle the suspension and make sure it isn't gonna hit anything, it's gonna be good then I go back and do all my finish welding. So at the moment, the whole suspension, the spring perches, the um, actual chassis brackets, everything is just tack welded. It's solidly tack welded, but just tack welded. Plus, when I did the tack welding, I pre-thought where I was going to put the tack welds. Why? Well, one thing is you want to make sure your tack welds are actually going to resist the minor forces that you're going to put on the truck, uh, the suspension to be able to cycle it because you don't want them to break off and then your, your axle fall on the floor or the body fall on top of the axle. The other thing is though, I've learned over time that depending on the method you're using to cut, and I don't have a plasma cutter or a torch unfortunately, so I'm doing everything with an angle grinder, I have learned that I have to really pre-think my tack so that if I do have to cut them off, I can cut them off easily enough with the angle grinder and it not cost me a bunch of time, a bunch of broken disc and some precarious cutting degrees or angles that could cause me harm in the future. So for instance, on the chassis side, um, pivot brackets, I tacked four tack welds, two on each side at the very corners that are easily accessible with the angle grinder to cut them off so that I can move them back. Unfortunately, on the back one, the only way I could actually tack weld it well on the inside of the chassis, which is really close to the gas tank, was right in the center. So I don't really know at the moment how I'm gonna cut that tack weld off. I had to have it, but I am going to figure out a way with an angle grinder or whatnot to grind that off very cautiously, not to cut a hole in my gas tank and that kind of stuff. And be able to um, use it and move it back to where I need it to be now. First thing though, I have got to get the chassis actually ground down to where it's usable for my purposes. Another thing I'm gonna do before I do anything is take measurements once again to make sure that I know exactly how much space I need to move the axle back. Now, 
online on the Beginner's Fab group on Facebook, which I encourage you to, to join. I had a couple of people say, well, why don't you make adjustable kingpin holes that you can slide it forward or backwards on the spring perch. And in fact, that is exactly what I have already done. What has happened though, is that I am at the furthest point forward on the spring perch with that guide hole, that pilot hole for the spring perch kingpin, and I can't, or centering pin, and I can't move it, the axle back any further on the actual spring perches that I have. So I am obligated at this point to actually cut the suspension back off and move it further backward. I don't have any other option. So that's where I'm at at the moment. Now, it's gonna be a little while for me to, to get all this done. It's basically a bunch of just laying on my back and, and using a flap wheel and a, grain, a grinding disc. So there's not much to see there, cutting them off, they're just little tack wells that I cut through with the, the um, cutting disc, and then I go back and flap wheel them smooth. But there's nothing really to show you guys on that. So once I'm done with all this, then we'll come back and look at what I've done. So a little earlier when we were talking, I was mentioning about trying to center up this axle inside the fender well and trying to make sure that everything was appropriate. So I've done a little bit of playing around with some adjustments and I've actually come to the conclusion that I may just be able to get away with not having to move the rear shackle mounts on the chassis, but only move the front pivot mount. I'm going to give it a try as it is and see how it affects the riding of the truck. Now, what does this mean? This means that my shackles will be at a longer uh, or a steeper angle than they were originally. And it means that I'm potentially playing with fire in the sense that I may have to do more work in the end if it doesn't work out like I hope. Well, we'll just have to see. Um, I'm, once again, no expert on, on leaf springs, so what I plan to do is actually move the front pivot bracket back on the chassis toward the rear one and a quarter inches. That's what I need, one and a quarter inches to make sure this is settled up or centered up. And then I plan on tacking it up, showing it to some of my more experienced fabrication friends online and uh, sending them some emails then letting them tell me that's too steep or that's not steep enough. Now, if my understanding of the geometry and mathematics and, you know, physics of all this kind of stuff work the way that I think it does, the only time I would really be in a really, really precarious situation is if this shackle was already sitting pretty close to horizontal. Because if it's sitting close to horizontal, there is no expansion room in the shackle radius pivot. That's because from horizontal, any direction upward or downward actually goes negative, gets smaller instead of longer. As long as it's actually down, it still has a longer arch outward that allows for the flatting, flattening of the springs under the compression. So I think that this will be okay because this pivot degree here or this angle of the shackle here that you see should not be too much different than what it is right now when I actually move this pivot point. Once again, that's my estimations and speculations. Now, I'm not saying that's correct 100%, but that's why I'm just gonna cut off the bracket, tack it up a little bit forward and, and test it. Now. This also means that because I have to move the bracket slightly forward, I know for a fact that the front three quarters of an inch of the bracket are going to be just kind of suspended where the frame actually starts to my, roll up. My brackets are four inches long and probably with a good three, three and a quarter inch weld on both sides plus the, the back and probably on top you could weld it and it'd be fine. But just to be on the absolute safe side, I'm probably gonna weld on some wings onto the side of the bracket that actually taper in toward the chassis and weld the chassis there as well. And then that way it'll give me even more contact with the chassis and it'll also take up some of that space that it's just hanging off the end. Um, and I'll probably put a piece of plate on the front as well so that it meets where the chassis rolls up and the flat part of the, of the bracket itself. Is that absolutely necessary? Uh, probably not for the weight of this truck, but I just feel better doing it, so that's what I'm going to do. 
Here you can see that I forgot to turn on my mic and I'm explaining what I'm doing about moving the pivot mount bracket back an inch and a quarter like I needed. So what I did is I moved the springs back where I wanted them to be to make sure the axle was centered. I disconnected both sides. Then I took the pass through hole of the bushing and I marked the center line on the chassis. That allowed me to center up the, hole, the tires and the axle inside the fender wells. And then I took the pivot mount bracket, looking at the pass-through hole for the bolts, and I aligned it center on that line that I had marked on the chassis for the center line hole of the bushing. I hope that kind of makes sense. And then that way I knew that even though the bolt is smaller than the bushing hole, if it's center line, then it'll fit. Now I'm not putting a smaller bolt inside a bigger bushing. I'm fixing that as well, and I'll explain how I'm doing that here shortly. Thanks for stopping by, thanks for watching the show, thanks for seeing what I'm up to, and don't forget to stop by and check out all the websites that I have going on. You can stop by beginnersfab.com, you can stop by ericmcgrew.tv, and you can stop by Off-Road Independence, where you will find my off-road podcast that I do. Don't worry, I'm not the expert. I interview other people to um, help them shed their light on off-roading, and we just talk about off-roading because, well, that's what we all like to do. We like to talk off-roading. So if you want to do that, I encourage you to do so. Please feel free to like, comment, and share on all of my videos. Uh, you can also uh, please subscribe to my video channel on YouTube. Um, one more thing is, is that I have t-shirts, stickers, and other swag available through Zazzle. They're good quality products, so please stop by ericmagrew.tv. Check out the left-hand side of my page. There is a link to Zazzle there and you can also go straight to zazzle.com forward slash off-road underscore independence and check out my store there. So all of that really helps me keep these shows going. Um, this is all out of pocket and I, any help that you guys were willing to give and any promotion that you're willing to, to take on by wearing my swag or putting a sticker on your vehicle is very much appreciated. If you buy a shirt, if you put a sticker on your vehicle, Please send me photos of them. I'll put them up on the page. Thanks, guys. Till next time, hope you guys have fun. Hope you're inspired to do a little bit of fabricating yourself. And as always, please be safe in all that you do, whether it be willing or fabricated. So until next time, have a good time, and I'll talk to you later.